In this video, I want to show you an oddity with the Scanner class. It happens when you have an integer followed by a string. And I've created this simple program to demonstrate the issue. So what I've done is I've imported the Scanner class. I've created a scanner object called from key. I've used it so the user can enter a name and an age. Now let's go ahead and run the program and see what happens. So I'm going to say Joe and his age is 23. Okay, your name is Joe, age is 23. Now, I'm going to copy the exact same code that I have right here, and I'm going to paste it right beneath. And now I'm going to say input your name. Instead, I'm going to say input, input a second name and input a second age. And I'm going to rename these variables name2 and age2. And I'm going to print out name2 and age2. And let's watch what happens when I run this program. You might expect it just to say, okay, your name is this, your age is this, your name is this, your age is this. When I run the program, I'm going to say Joe, and then I'm going to enter in the age as 23. Now, what should happen here is it should ask me, what is your name, or input a second name right here. But it doesn't. It skips for some reason. And if you don't know what's going on here, you're going to feel like the programming world has just shifted and, uh, and nothing makes sense. Because you could go over your code again and again, and you're probably not going to be able to see the error. And it has to do with the scanner class. And as I said earlier, it's a problem with an integer followed by a string. And I'm going to show you how to fix this problem. Because you see when we enter in an age right here, it says the name is nothing. So let's look at a few slides to see what causes this problem and how it can be fixed. So what I've done is I've laid out the problem again, but instead I've laid it out on a slide. So let's say that we enter in the name, Joe. And this is what the computer sees, Joe, with this end line character right here, meaning I've reached the end of the line. So when the next line method is called, it looks for this and says, okay, everything before the backslash n, I am going to use as the next line. And so therefore, the name is now going to be stored as Joe. The next thing that happens is we enter the 23. It enters 23, end of line. But the problem is, is that as opposed to next line, next int does not look for this end of line token. What it looks for are actual numbers. And so what it does is it takes those numbers and it stores them in age, but what does it leave behind? The backslash n. Well, you can see this is a problem because what comes up next? Another next line statement that's looking for the second name. And what it does is it finds a backslash in there that was left behind by age. And it says, oh, I'm going to take everything before that, and I'm going to store that in as the second name. Well, there's nothing before that, and that's absolutely what we don't want it to do. But what it does anyway is it stores nothing into name2, and then it continues on with the problem. And the continuation is asking, okay, what is your second age? Then we can enter in five. It'll take in the five because it's, again, looking for the number. It'll leave behind this, but we're not looking for anything afterwards. And it will store age two as five. So then when we print it out, we'll get Joe 23, nothing, five. There's a rather easy fix to this, and let's see how that works. On this slide, I've done the exact same thing. We enter in Joe. It looks for that end of line token, finds it, puts everything before it, and stores it in the name variable. Then we enter in 23. Next int looks for the numbers, takes the numbers, stores them inside of age, leaves behind the backslash n, or the end of line token. And then what we want to do is we want to create a consumer string. And what that consumer string is going to do is it's going to consume this backslash n and get rid of it. So then when we enter in the next name, it will no longer be there. And we can enter in Bob free and clear. And we do that, enter in Bob. It looks for that end of line token. Bob is then stored over here, just like we want it to be, five, Next in, looks for a number, finds a 5, stores it there, and we're done. And so what I'm going to do in code is show you how to enter this consumer string into the code. So what I have here is the program from before. Let's go ahead and remember the problem. When I run it, I type in Joe, age 23. And then when I press enter, it doesn't allow me to enter a name because that end of line token is still left over from the 23. 
So it does let me enter in an age, but it enters in the age as an empty string. So what we want to do, as indicated in the slides, is enter in a consumer string that's going to consume that end of line character and allow us to move on with our program. So we're going to do that right here because it's after the next int, but it's before the next line. And all you have to do is say the name of your object, which is from key, dot, and then next line. And what that's going to do is consume the backslash n or the end of line token and allow us to cleanly enter in the next name. And let's just show that it works. Put in a name Joe 23. And then you can see that we can enter in Bob 5 and it prints out cleanly. I want you to notice that you do not have to store this as anything because you're not going to use it. But if you would like to name it something, you could. You could say string something equals from key dot next line, but it's not necessary. So what I want you to see from this is anytime you have the combination of next int or even next double followed by a next line, you're going to have a problem entering in the string that follows next int or next double. And the solution is to simply put in a consumer string that will consume that next line and you will not have to worry about that backslash n when it comes to this next line statement.